Hello friends, today we're going to upgrade the Flywoo Explorer LR4 and we're going to turn it into the best drone for traveling. And all we need for this are three things. A set of titanium screws for weight reduction and a more powerful ELRS transmitter, in my case from Speedybee. And also B7000 and K705 to make it waterproof as I already did with Cinelog 30B3 in the previous video. My set of titanium screws includes all the necessary screws with extra ones, including those for mounting the stack, motors and propellers. ELRS from SpeedyB has a power of about 100 to 120 milliwatts, unlike the lighter ELRS from Flywoo, which has a power of only 10 milliwatts. Let's start disassembling the drone. First remove the propellers and top board of the frame. Next, unscrew the lower mount of the camera and ELRS antenna. Carefully remove the antenna and disconnect the ELRS from the flight controller. It's a pretty cool and lightweight ELRS, but Flywoo's official support team said the range is only 3 kilometers and the power is 10 milliwatts. I'm not satisfied with those specs, so I'll have to replace it. Now let's unscrew the O4 Pro unit. Remove the frame standoffs. And right now cut off the buzzer and GPS contacts. I'll remove the connectors from the flight controller and solder them directly. This is all for convenience and better protection from water since isolating the connectors is slightly less convenient than the flat flight controller board. Remove the buzzer and GPS and all that remains is to unscrew the flight controller and motors. Everything is ready, now let's start soldering. First we need to lengthen the wires going to the buzzer because unlike the GPS, whose contacts on the flight controller are located directly under the connector, the contacts to the buzzer are on the other side of the flight controller. We solder an extra couple of centimeters of wire and cover the soldering area with heat shrink tubing. I would also like to mention that it is better to lengthen the wires on the GPS a little so that they are not stretched. The next step is to remove the connectors. I will do this with wire cutters. Some may say that this is a savage method but since I have not yet learned how to use a heat gun, this method is safer and more comfortable for me. I removed only 5 ports, buzzer, GPS, video transmitter, ELRS and the analog camera port which we do not need at all. Now all we need to do is solder everything to the flight controller. Don't skimp on the flux, apply a thick layer so that the solder flows more easily. And don't forget to wash off the flux after soldering even if you are using a no clean flux. At the very least this will improve the sealing of all components.
Cut the O4 unit wires to the desired length. We also solder the contacts directly to the GPS. Soldering is complete. Let's check that everything is working. Everything is okay. Let's move on to waterproofing. To do this, we use K705 sealant and B7000 glue. Don't forget to cover the barometer on the flight controller, otherwise it may simply fail if sealant gets inside it. Cover all visible contacts and all chips and MOSFETs around the perimeter. There is no need to cover them on top. It is easier to fill everything with glue, but it has worse thermal conductivity than K705, so we cover the flight controller and ESC with sealant. But we will fill the places where there is no strong heating and hard to reach places with glue. I would like to note that this is exactly B7000 special glue for electronic. You can also use T7000 and no other. And use exactly K705 sealant, which is also specifically designed for electronics. All of the above do not conduct electricity and have good adhesion to our components. B7000 and T7000 are also very easy to remove by twisting them with tweezers, which is a significant advantage over other materials. You can also use special compounds for FPV conformal coating, but they will be several times more expensive after covering one side of our stack, we set it aside to dry for a couple of hours and in the meantime, we'll work on the O4 unit. In short, we need to apply glue to the joint between the two parts of the camera body and around the lens, as well as to the unit board and the contacts for connecting to the flight controller. To understand what needs to be covered and what doesn't, take a look at these schemes created by Stark FPV. I will leave a link to the original source in the description below the video. We will do all this with B7000 glue. All the details are already available in a special video on my channel about waterproofing the O4 unit. If you're interested, go ahead and watch it. And make sure you don't miss such important videos. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Leave the O4 unit to dry for a couple of hours and in the meantime, cover the other side of the stack. While the stack is drying, assemble the O4 unit, then put everything together to check it. After assembly, connect the unit to the flight controller and apply power, then check its functionality once more before assembly. It is better to spend an extra 3 minutes now than to disassemble and reassemble everything later if something goes wrong. Super, everything works, all that's left is to assemble it. You can already connect the antennas to the unit and fill the IPEX one with glue, as this is the weak point of the O4 Pro unit and they often pull out along with antennas. But before assembling, you need to replace the screws on the bottom plate of the drone frame with titanium ones. Here we need 4 M2 by 8 screws and 2 M2 by 7 screws. We also need 2 M2 nuts. Coat everything with thread sealant so that it does not come loose from motor vibrations, which can happen at the most inopportune moment. Put the stack on screw size M2 by 20. Plastic nuts can be used for the stack. They're sufficient to hold it tight.
There are only a couple of things left. I installed the drone's arm supports. They didn't last long, but they were definitely worth installing. I'll tell you how that happened a little later. These supports need longer engine mounting screws, two M2X8 screws, and leaving one M2X6 screw per engine. Let's speed up the assembling process a little. You can see the size and number of screws needed for further drone assembly on the screen. Now we move on to weighing. The dry weight is 174 grams, which seems to be only 2 grams lighter despite all our weight reduction efforts, but don't forget that the arm supports weigh 4.5 grams and all the waterproofing procedures added about 5 grams as well, so without the weight reduction it would have been 8 to 10 grams heavier, which is noticeable for a long range. The weight with an 850mAh battery from GNB is just a bit over 242 grams. With the 850 milliamp GNB battery, which is similar in weight to the lava battery, it weighs less than 261 grams. And with a DIY 3000 milliamp Li-Ion battery, it weighs an impressive 368.5 grams. There are many comments under the video review of this drone about how to make DIY battery. I wrote to newbie drone with this question because I would like to test their new 186050 batteries, especially in comparison with Molisil P30B, which were the best in this category. If newbie drone supports my idea, the video will be available very soon. Let's check how long range this drone really is. But let me start by telling you how I broke those supports. It was just a routine test to check how GPS rescue works. When the drone is upside down, when I fly as low as possible to the ground at high speed, everything was fine and I decided to just fly around until the battery ran out. A little freestyle, as much as possible on a drone like this. And I shot some beautiful views. And at that moment I got carried away with the flight and didn't notice that I'd flown behind a hill behind me. Here is my car, and here is the hill below which I went down. And I simply lost the video connection, I was confused and just let go of the controls without pressing rescue. But because the connection with the remote controller was still on, the drone itself went into rescue mode a little later and when the image appeared, I saw this. And this is what actually happened to the drone. It hit the ground at full speed and only then went into rescue mode. Well, at least it was tested in real life. I decided not to take control and to check the full return home. Everything went perfectly and it landed on its own a couple of meters from the home point. Of course, I had to say goodbye to the supports after that, but they fully paid for themselves, because without them I would have lost arms from such an impact, and it would have been practically impossible to get them in the time I needed there. However, as practice has shown, they had no effect on flight performance. The image from the drone is excellent even without these bars, and wind resistance is no worse, although of course with such weight and power, nothing can protect it from strong winds. With the next battery I decided to check the flight time and fly to a nearby mountain that was 5 kilometers away from me. There were no problems at all, especially since there was no altitude gain, so I flew to the mountain in less than 5 minutes and without rushing circled around the fields and along the stream and returned in 10 minutes. But let's take a break from flying for a moment, because while I was editing this video, more than a thousand of you friends gathered on my channel. Thank you all, I am very happy, and I will do everything to ensure that you do not regret subscribing to this channel. I want to mark this moment and give away something to you. I haven't thought through all the details yet, but you will find out soon. I would also like to remind you that I have an Instagram. There I share a little more about my daily FPV life. Scan the QR code and follow me. I will be glad to see you there. With the remaining charge, I circled around myself, flew behind the hill again, and lost connection but I didn't make the same mistake again, I just added throttle and went up over the hill.
and the flight time at a good speed, I didn't try to fly slowly, was 16 minutes and 55 seconds. Now let's move on to another day and do a couple more tests. My task here was to fly not only far but also high. Six kilometers from my home point, which is where I caught the first Torex loss, I slowly climbed to 1,100 meters, turned back, and continued to gain altitude to almost 1,800 meters, after which I wanted to fly into a cloud, which is where I headed. And as you may have noticed from the raindrops running across the screen, another test was passed. The waterproof test. Important note about my stupidity and the awesome performance of the drone and ELRS from SpeedyB. I forgot to switch the package rate frequency and did all these tests at 500 Hz. And I think that 6 km at 500 Hz is very cool. The next two videos will test what this drone is really capable of in long range. And it won't be what 100% FPV bloggers show on YouTube, who fly around like vegetables for half an hour and talk about how good this drone is and how long it flies. Such tests are absolutely useless and have nothing to do with long range and real flights over long distances. I promise my tests will be radically different from what you've seen with this drone before. It's time to wrap up this video. Thank you to everyone who watched. Please leave a comment to let us know if you like this drone and what you think about the modifications we made. Goodbye everyone and see you soon.